Okay everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam, and today we're going to be driving around 50 Cent's hometown neighborhood where he grew up, South Jamaica, Queens, alright? Back when he was growing up in this area, still today it's not the best, it's a very, very big drug spot. A lot of drug gangs, a lot of crime enterprises they call them, they were so big. So we're gonna shoot around his neighborhood a little bit. We're actually gonna pass by his house, his house he grew up in, his grandma's house. And right in front of his house is where he got shot. So we'll be passing exactly where he got shot. This is Guy R. Brewer, right in front of us. One of the main uh, roads that goes through South Jamaica. Of course, we have to wait for a nice line of cars. This guy's letting me go. Appreciate it. I blocked the whole road. Yeah, this area was so bad that even my dad said when he was younger, this was the closest DMV to his house. He would. You couldn't come to this DMV alone. You have to come with a group of guys, or else you would get jumped. It was that crazy. And that was in like the 90s, a little bit before that. That's when it was starting to get cleaned up more. Today, you're not really gonna have much of a problem, but it's not the greatest area. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna shoot down here a little bit. We're gonna make a right and loop around. So yeah, 50 cent, the reason why he came to this neighborhood is because his mom passed away when he was eight years old. She was 50. She was actually a drug dealer also. And um, she died in a fire. It said a mysterious fire. I don't know exactly what that means. I guess they don't really know the cause of it or whatever. Um, so yeah, she died when he was eight. He moved in with his grandparents. His, his dad also left him when he was very young, so he didn't have anyone else to go with. He moved in with his grandparents, and um, yeah, he was living there. And then in the year 2000, he was 20 years old. He's sitting outside his. One second, gotta make sure I'm going the right way here. Oh, let me back it up a little bit before he gets shot. So he started dealing drugs when he was 12 because he realized that all the people that had money and financial freedom in his neighborhood were the drug dealers. So he said, all right, that's how I'll do it. So when he was 12, his grandparents thought he was in after school programs when he was really dealing drugs. So he started very, very young. And uh, yeah, that turned into him dealing drugs until his music career popped off, really. So, back to the day. It's the year 2000. He walks out of his house. His grandma is uh, tending to the garden in front of the house. He goes and his friend's outside to pick him up. He goes and sits in his friend's car. As he does that, a car pulls up next to him. Passenger hops out, goes to his side, and shoots him. Shoots him and the person driving. He got shot nine times. He got shot in the hand, the arm, the hip, both legs, his chest, and his left cheek. Okay? Broke both his legs. Um, the bullet that went to his cheek, a fragment, is actually still in his mouth which, or in his tongue, causing a swollen tongue, which kind of gives him his like unique rapping voice. I guess if anything positive came out of it, it would be that. Um, yeah, this is his block. This is the block he grew up on. I'll show you exactly where he got shot. I've been looking into this pretty thoroughly. See this fire hydrant here to the right? He was parked right in this spot. Exactly right here. And then, not the first house on the right, the second house. I'm actually going to aim right at it. I'll pull in the driveway, pretending like I live there. See, he was sitting out here, his grandma, 
right there next to him. So yeah, he got brought to the hospital. He was in the hospital for 13 days. This house we're aiming at right now. Right there, where he grew up. We'll go back past right where he got shot. Right at this hydrant, right behind this Nissan. Oh, sorry car. I'm trying to give the people a tour here, trying to give the people a good look. So yeah, he spent 13 days in the hospital. Pretty intense, broken legs, everything. He said when he got shot, it didn't really hurt. He didn't really, the adrenaline's going so much. Once you, he said, once I realized I was okay, once the doctors told me I was okay, that's when the pain started setting. Which is pretty nuts to, to think about. Yeah, he was shot nine times with a nine millimeter. Um, his house, the address of the house, I think he actually still owns that house. I'm not sure now, but I watched an interview that he did. He said he owned it still. It's a 140-52, 140 161st Street. So it's right off the Bell Parkway. Very easy to get to. Um, and now the reason behind why he got shot. So he made a, a song called The Ghetto Quran that never got released. I think it got leaked. It was released that year, in the year 2000. It never released it, but it got leaked. And it was talking about the drug dealers in his neighborhood. So, talking about how, all the stuff they did. And I guess one of the drug dealers, the main one he was really talking about, Kenneth Supreme Mc, McGriff. Kenneth Supreme McGriff. Supreme was a street name, so Kenneth McGriff. Thought that he went in a little too much detail into his life. So apparently that's the guy that got him shot. Now the person that actually shot him um, has since been murdered, and the person that killed him is doing life in jail. So pretty nuts. That's to to show how bad it was, how bad these guys were in general. Um, all right, now we're heading up Guyar Brewer North. We're going to um, where Kenneth Supreme McGriff had his whole drug operation. Now this was. This is an insane drug operation here going on. His team was called the Supreme Team, and their main thing was manufacturing and selling crack, which was in the 80s, in the time that he was big. I guess, obviously, until the early 2000s. He was arrested a few times, but he was out when uh, 50 Cent got shot. Um, yeah, they sold crack. That was their main thing. It was during the boom, the, during the crack era. And the South Bronx is one of the worst areas that crack got into. Um, they said in its peak, they, they were founded, the, the Supreme Team was founded in 1981. And in 1987, at its peak, it said they made $200,000 a day selling crack. So the, their little, uh, their headquarters was the Baisley Park Building Projects. It's five eight-story um, projects, which I don't know if you don't know. The projects are public housing given to people in poverty, a place for them to live, pretty much, government housing. So we're going up there now. Um, yeah, it was said that in his peak in 1987, he ordered eight homicides. So he got eight people killed just in that one year. He had his whole project complex on lockdown. He had people that were on all the buildings with walkie-talkies that would go to other people. And if a cop came in the area, they'd all get walkie. And all the drug dealers on the streets that actually had the crack on them would hide all the stuff that would get them in trouble. So they went on for a long time without having really problems with the police. Everything was hidden. They really kept it on the lock. We're pulling up into the next block or two. Okay. 
Yeah, when I heard 200,000 a day, it's unbelievable. Ooh, someone going hard now, Shelby. It's always fun to see. Not the most safe on this one, damn day, but go for it. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see the buildings in the distance. Those are the projects. We'll be driving up the center. See, as you can see, these buildings are like the tallest buildings around, so I'm sure you could see for miles if any cops are coming. So you have this building to the right corner, this building in the left corner. To the right, out of view, there's another building. And then to the left, there's two buildings that are next to this one. So that's the five buildings. And yeah, once we head up through this area, so you could really see the buildings. See the big yards they had, see across. We'll, uh, we'll end the video, we'll wrap it up. We actually just passed a mobile uh, station where they lifted up. Crime's still bad over here. So yeah, this is the... Oh, and they actually made even more buildings since then. There's more on the other side. So yeah, that is a little tour of the drug culture of the 80s in South Jamaica all the way to 2000s when 50 Cent got shot. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Likes and comments are always appreciated. Helps out the channel. Thank you guys. Goodbye.